It's May 30th, 1906, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. When Milton S. Hershey, the Willy Wonka of Pennsylvania, designed the town that would bear his name to host the factory that would bear his name to make the chocolate that would bear his name, he also thought his workers might need a place to unwind. So on this day in 1906, he opened a park that bore his name. And though Hershey Park initially drew in crowds with trees and groves, a bandstand and a pavilion, these days screams fill the air as it's a theme park playing host to classy roller coasters, the Coco Cruiser, Candemonium and the Jolly Rancher Remix. First off, I have to say, we can't ignore the fact that the S in Milton S. Hershey stood for Snavely, giving him the, the <laughs> ultimate capitalist name. It's like Dick Dastardly. Like uh, and when he was naming his town, he offered a $100 prize to a person who suggested the most suitable name for the town. Snavelysville. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely what I was suggested. The prize actually went to a Mrs. T.K. Doyle of Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. Her submission was Hershey Coco. But mysteriously, the cocoa part somehow dropped off (laughs) along the way. way. The town was named Hershey and the park was named Hershey Park. But the fascinating thing is that even though they expanded over the years with merry-go-rounds and tennis courts and bowling alleys and all the rest of it, they only really leaned into being a chocolatey chocolate park. That's what they should have called the town. Chocolatey chocolate town. (laughs) (laughs) They should have. Um, They only really got into that in 2020 when they began discussing the opening of a new area for the park that was called actually Chocolate Town. You have to remember that at the time we're talking about 1906, the whole idea of leisure facilities for working class families was still a pretty new phenomenon. Mm. And there were actually only a few dozen people living in Hershey when the park opened. So right from the off, even though it had been designed as a park for workers at the Hershey Company, most of the visitors were from out of town. They flocked to the area to see attractions like playgrounds and a boating lake and a Whoa. pavilion and a bandstand. <laughs> yeah, it was really ahead of its time, wasn't it? A hundred years before Google were enticing their employees to stay in the office. That's basically the idea, isn't it? You have this double-edged offer. On the one hand, yes, we will provide facilities for the people of the town. And to be fair, some profits from Hershey Park even now go towards supporting the local school. The other reason is to keep people in the town. Like, it's sort of like, don't leave the town because then you can work longer in the factory and your children are more likely to come and work for me as well. So there is a a capitalist underpinning to the utopia. Yeah, I think in the UK, we're not as familiar with company towns to just sort of spring up in a very oversettled UK. But in the US, at the height of the company town phenomenon, there were more than 2,500 across America. It's been estimated that 3% of the entire country's population lived in a town that was owned and run by the company that they worked for. And you can obviously see how that was a double-edged sword, because on one hand, because it was this sort of paternalistic capitalism, it did offer residents things that were uncommon at the time, like electricity and indoor plumbing, free schools healthcare, sometimes pensions as well. But also you were at the whim of your employer. You know, if you lost your job, it meant you also lost your home. And so you ended up with this range of practices, which ranged from the truly oppressive ones. You know, there were towns where you had a company store and you were paid in basically coupons for the company store. Wow. And then there were also things that were just annoying. You know, I think a lot of us are familiar with Bourneville, which was the town created for employees of Cadbury's. But because the founder was a teetotaler, no pubs or off licenses were built in the town. So you had to sort of submit to the whims of the employer right. as well. And it's very hard to look into the soul of a capitalist uh, confectioner, of course, but it did seem as though Hershey kind of was into the idea of having happy people hmm. I, I, in his town. I don't think it was... Happy Oompa Loompas. Yes, exactly. Well, I think he was compassionate and he wanted to pass some of his uh, good fortune on to other people. I mean, that doesn't mean right. that he didn't also want to milk them as a resource. I mean, both things are going on at once, aren't they? Well, this is true. And he was born in fairly humble circumstances. He was actually born in a, a farm near Derry Church, which is a small town that eventually became Hershey, Pennsylvania. He went back there and, uh, and founded this thing. He was from Mennonite stock and dropped out of school, started working for a printer. He got his big break in ice cream eventually. Um, he got sent by his mother to work with Joseph H. Royer, who was a confectioner in the nearby town of uh, Lancaster, and started up his own caramel company. And that was really where he started to build his empire. 
Yeah, because he realised that you could put caramel in chocolate and people would like it. And I was reading that thinking, for God's sake, I wish I lived in an era where I could come up with an idea like this and become (laughs) a millionaire with my own town and my own park. (laughs) But it's funny that you mention his Mennonite origins because religion plays such a big part in the establishment of the nicer company towns. Not like there were like really horrible ones attached to sort of really remote mines. But, you know, what was seen as these progressive towns offering all the amenities, a lot of it had a religious basis too because it was about creating a respectable, sober, working-class work force who would obviously then be more productive and so when you look at something like Hershey Park yes it was offering something that wasn't very common at the time i.e nice free leisure activities for working class families but it's always the emphasis on the wholesome recreation you know things that will keep you away from drink Mm. and idleness so there would be swimming baths sports pitches a bandstand where you could listen to music that sort of thing i'm gonna hazard a guess that i'm the only one of the three of us who's been to Hershey, Pennsylvania. You've I been? Have. Oh, wow. Well, I, I can't believe you sat on it this long. <laughs> I actually haven't been to Hershey Park, but I've been to Hershey. Oh. That doesn't sound what? like Hold you. Hold on. Yeah. You're a coaster we'll head. Um, <laughs> but um, what's interesting about the location of Hershey, Pennsylvania, is that the reason I got there, and the reason a lot of people get there, is I drove there from New York. I was on holiday, and uh, my wife was pregnant at the time. We flew into New York City, and we're like, I don't want to be here. This is too busy, and there's nowhere to sit down. Um, (laughs) So we went to New York State and, like, hung around in the Catskills and stuff like that. And then thought, looking at a map, like, we can either go and see more lakes and mountains, which is very nice, but we've got those in England too, or we can go somewhere that we definitely don't have in the UK, and that's Amish country. And Hershey's just on the other side of it. So it's quite interesting, like, when you make that journey from the kind of almost amoral religionless world of new york Mm. and then through amish country it's almost like if you're gonna set up a capitalist system in that part of the world you you have to marry the two somehow and that's kind of what this is isn't it it is an (laughs) attempt to do money making with ethics and god but that still doesn't answer the question why you didn't go to the theme park. Uh, well, actually, the, the pregnant wife did have something to do with it. So roller coasters wouldn't okay. have been a good idea. <laughs> oh. But Hershey, the city, is... It's interesting. People are very proud to be from there, the people that we met. And Hershey, the man, <laughs> is still very revered there as this kind of self-made millionaire and entrepreneur with three failed businesses behind him who came out here and built this place. And it is weird because you can smell the chocolate in the air you know, it's, I mean, I, I'm not sure it's entirely accurate what you said, Arian, about them only leaning into their chocolatiness now. I mean, there was a chocolate <laughs> museum, there was a chocolate That's experience, true. there was a chocolate shop. The street lights look like Hershey's Kisses. Sorry, are the, are the townsfolk bursting into song at random <laughs> points? Um, and we went to, uh, it was like on the gate of Hershey Park, there's an actual park, like a landscape gardens. We went and walked around there. And I suppose that is something akin to what this would have looked like in 1906 attractive yeah. landscape gardens looking over the whole of Hershey Town. Yeah, because it didn't take them long to start adding in more attractions beyond the sort of sedate ones that it opened with. So it was only two years after it opened that, that it had its first ride. Roller coasters not really being a thing at the time. It had its merry-go-round. Then it was joined by a miniature railway. You can see we're amping up the <laughs> drama and the excitement. And then the first roller coaster, the Joyride opened in 1923 to mark the 20th anniversary and apparently no women were allowed to ride it on the first day don't know wow. why probably their wombs being thrown around <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> same reason ollie's wife didn't go <laughs> yeah, <in>. probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but i suppose this is what i mean about them not leaning into the chocolatiness that all of the rides that they did up until comparatively recently were called things like the wildcat or the scooter or whatever and it's only now that you're getting the candemonium and okay you know, the <laughs> but they've they've since the 70s had characters walking around who are essentially giant hershey yes. bars with faces on but <laughs> there is this tension because it was free It was free admission until 1971. You'd pay to go on each ride, but the locals could just walk around and get some candy floss and sit and watch the roller coasters. And then in the 70s, when they put loads of investment into it, there was this decision to then say, OK, we need to appeal to people basically to come from New York for the day and they're coming to experience the chocolate town. Yeah, and the, I mean, the irony of us talking about how Hershey Park took a while to lean into its chocolatey connections is that to the British palate, Hershey's chocolate actually tastes really horrible <laughs> I'm to glad most you said people. It. 
<laughs> because it and apparently it's due to this thing called butyric acid, which to us has a vomity undertone. Yeah. It's used to stop chocolate from melting in hot climates. But this is something I found out in the, doing the research was that Milton Hershey, not only did he invent bars of chocolate that tasted great to Americans, he also invented a really famous bar that tasted pretty bad to Americans. And that was actually his brief. He invented the first ever chocolate bar designed for military ration kits. Hmm. So he was. this was during World War II, and he was given an unusual brief that the bar had to withstand high temperatures for soldiers in tropical locations, but because it was supposed to be emergency-only nutrition, it should taste, quote, a little better than a boiled potato. (laughs) (laughs) Make a character out of that and put them around the theme park. (laughs) Tomorrow. Everything near him was ablaze with fire. All the foreign lands were blasted by his scorching breath. Love the show? Support the show. Patreon.com slash Retrospectors. Part of the ACAST Creator Network.